Great day for crude numbers. Crude, we're getting crude, right? We sure are. So we got EIA inventories at 10.30 a.m. Yeah, quite the move on crude, man. It's still continuing. You back it up to just yesterday. We were at 40, so yesterday at 3 o'clock, let alone you back it up even further in terms of Monday afternoon, we were down below 49.50. Yesterday at 3 o'clock, we're at 49.73. You're up more than almost $2 right now. You were up there at about $2 exactly, 51.61, the price of crude. I'm going to jump in here and see what kind of options we have prior to that 10.30 number. So 51.61, we're looking at the March contract. If you're looking at 11 a.m.s, you could have 51.75 is going to line up. I'm just going to jump to the noons to see where they line up. So the noons, we're going to have to go almost 40 cents away, no matter which side you choose, with either 52 or 51.50. And then the 230s, 51 is going to be our option. So it looks like the only real option where you're, you're not, you're very close to where it's trading at is 11 a.m. Here's your bullish spread from 51.75 to 53.25. You're about 14 pennies out of the money. That one's costing you, uh, excuse me, you're, you're buying it. That one's costing you $15 because you're good 14 pennies out of the money. Be aware you have an eight tick bid offer spread. That's a little big for these yeah, oil contracts. It is. Um, usually they're pretty tight and you're gonna see the same eight or nine tick spread on the bearish side as well. There's your bearish trade from 51.75 to 50.25. You'd be selling it. You're risking 27. You have a good 15 cents of intrinsic value in there. But boy, when you're paying a good seven cents bid offer here and a good eight cents here, that's a 15 tick bid offer spread on both sides. You're having to pay um, to set that up. And it's only $150 pie is in a buck 50. And you're paying 15 cents just in bid offer spread on both sides. That's a big spread. But uh, we'll see what happens. And I got the whisper number up here, okay. so let's take a look at this. Uh, here we go. So what, what, what the market is looking for, well, the, the survey number um, is three, a build of 3.2 million barrels, okay. I believe. Uh, yep. The whisper number is 4.2 million. I just put okay. in a build of 5.2 million. Perfect. Good. You know, so we'll see where this baby shakes out. Oh, this is awesome. B Mr. Bill, okay, so last night, oh, there was a 6 million build last night. Okay, in the API. Yeah, and then a small build, and uh, thanks, Mr. Bill, and gasoline. We'll see where this goes. I mean, the, the, yeah. bo the bottom line is that uh, there's there's no doubt that what we've had thus far, folks, is that uh, oil has held. Um, if I get this active, let me see. I'll do the generic contract because you can see it a little bit better. Um, this is this was the bottom of the consolidation that it's been in, and. We put this back, and you're going to see that this is this is an important part of the consolidation. This 50-60, yeah. you know, we got below it, but you know, now you're above it again. So the bottom line is that we'll see what it can hold because when this doesn't hold, you're talking about a 42 uh, print in oil, 47 to 42. And just to throw up a headline on my screen up there, so you have OPEC slashing oil demand outlook for 2020 as the coronavirus outbreak stifles China. So pretty remarkable numbers here. OPEC downwardly revising its outlook for global oil demand growth to 0.99 million barrels per day in 2020. That's down 0.23 million barrel day. So it was sitting wow. at about a million. And no, excuse me, it was sitting at about 1.23 million. Yeah. And they brought it down to a million. That's, that's, that's almost a 20% reduction from the previous month's estimate. And what this is going to hint to, though, is that you might have the um, OPEC and allied non OPEC producers having to cut now with that big of a dr dramatic. So it's almost like in the US, right, where we get an economic slowdown. They say, well, that's okay because the Fed's going to come in, they're going to cut, and the market actually trades higher. The OPEC slowdown is so much that you might force those types of cuts in production, uh, which yes. the market might be re re responding to to trade higher. Almost oh, inverse, right? Bad, bad news for the market. They say that's okay. OPEC's going to cut, um, right? But that could be what's kind of giving it a little bit of a floor here from 49.50 to 51.60 that area. Yeah, exactly. And then it's going to depend, folks, on, on how much our drillers just keep drilling, drilling, drilling. Because right. the the understanding in the business, folks, is that the large integrated companies, meaning the Exxon, Chevrons of the world, they've taken over more of the shale. And as that has happened, well, those large integrated companies, you know, are not like the, the middle companies. They just keep going. I mean, they, they, they're, they're going to just pump, pump, pump. 
Yes. Because overall, that you know is a good piece of it, but it's not like the medium companies. Like if you and I were in the oil business, we'd have to stop. I mean, because you go right. broke. They right. they're not going to go broke. They're just going to no. you know they're going to go through that cycle. They're going to go down. They're going to go up. And the real question is, you know, how much are they going to do? So oil out here. What do we just pull off here? Whoa! Look at this. I should have put it in a lot higher. A build you should have. <laughs> yeah, a build of 7.6 million barrels, folks. That is Yikes. one monster build. That um, sure is. You know, so uh, you, let's see. You get gas. I see you also had gas inventories falling 95,000 barrels. Yeah. Big, big numbers here, man. Um, we got plenty of oil. There's no, there's, no, to, there's no doubt about that. And to jump over to the price, uh, slight dip. 51.49. We were just at 51.60 and change when we came in. So you're talking about only 10 cents to the downside um, with crude reacting so far. Yeah, and it's early in the day. But the bottom line is that that is one monster build. Hey, so listen to this, folks. You got. Uh, wait to see this, Tommy. This is, I'm surprised that the S and P's aren't like at 45 bucks right now. So you get Powell, um, you know, getting questioned right now in the Senate, and. So listen to this quote. This is pretty amazing. So uh, this was at 10.20 this morning. You know, Powell, low rates are not really a choice anymore. And I don't know what that means, that part of it means. But here's the next one. He says, it'll more than, he said, it'll be more than likely. More, it, it, he says. It'll be more likely that thank the you. Fed. It'll be yeah. more likely that the Fed needs to return to forward guidance and large-scale asset purchases of longer-term securities. The, yeah. Says those tools will be used aggressively if needed. You know, we, we've talked about, you know, the, the Fed and the Fed put for years, uh, but this is, this is a Fed put in an extraordinary way. There's no doubt. It is what yeah. it is. The um, market has to love to hear that, for oh sure. Oh, my God. You right. know, it, what happens, folks, is that when you, when you get the aspect of... Uh, the Fed buying, you know, short-term bonds, which they've been buying for a long period of time, and, and long-term bonds. Um, but when you're talking about asset purchases on a longer-term basis, that is where they really do have a put under the marketplace. Because what ends up happening is that the, the way the Fed has been structured is that they have much more control, or they've had much more control, over the short-term versus the longer-term. Bottom line, you buy... You, you know, you, you pile into longer-term assets. Guess what? It's going to be both ways here. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my God. And and the no reaction means that the market maybe already knew that and expected it, right? Yes. That that's how. Yeah. 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 No doubt. And that's yeah. what we've been seeing on a continual basis on the way up. And yeah. I suspect the market's going to push them as far as they can push them, right? Yes. Why, why yeah. not? You know.